Hello, humans of the earth, and thank you for joining us on this wonderful day. My name is Heidi. And my name is Dana. And this is Fun Times with Dana and Heidi. Today we'll be discussing some of the latest positive news stories, but stories. But first, we have our wonderful Tweet of the Week. This Tweet of the Week is a rather interesting one. It comes from at Fish Bowel, which is, I like that username a lot. I have a very creative, very creative mind. Right very there. nice, very nice. Yeah. And so the tweet says, interviewer, what did you bring to the booth? Yeah, interviewer, no. What did you just put on my desk? Me. You mean my toad? And honestly. Wait, what? I don't get it. So he's at a job interview and Mm -hmm. the interviewer is asking, what did you bring to the table? And then, and then the guy is, the guy is like, um, in my last job, I brought up a lot of enthusiasm and the interviewer is like, no, what did you just put on the table? And he's like, you mean my toad? He put a toad on the table. And this is such, this is such a power move. Like going in, what if you go into a job interview? And if you can see that the interviewer doesn't like you, or you just gave like a really stupid answer or something, you can just pull out your toad out of your pocket and be like, this is my magic toad. So if you don't give me this job, my magic toad will toad laser eyes, and he's going to place a curse on you and your family if you don't give me this job. And so it's a pro because you get the job. Is a pro because your boss is scared of you and it's a pro because everyone else is scared of you and now you can just basically just do whatever you want at work with little to no repercussions basically just do whatever you want at work with little to no repercussions it's a power move and we appreciate it or you could just pull out a oh, wow. and add a little a little sprinkle of personality you know that's how you show that you really are an interesting person you just carry around your little toe with you like the username is called fishy yes and it is yep. a fish on a man's head i appreciate it all it. makes sense now it all I makes appreciate sense this account very much this is what i aspire to be in life this is my one and only goal in life to become at fish bowel okay so moving we're on we have bowel. our first uh new story okay so moving we're on we have our first uh new story which heidi is going to tell us a little bit about so heidi can you go ahead Yes, I will definitely go on ahead. And for this today, for today's news story, we are going to be talking about a TikTok made by the name Fat Fat Supreme. <laughs> me too. I am the Fat Fat Supreme. That is me. And I think his real name's Des. Desi something related to Des. I don't know. I only I only watch but, her to him as Fat Fat Supreme. Okay. Yes. So Fat Fat Supreme yes. posted. A TikTok, a TikTok of him working. He works in like a fast food restaurant mm-hmm. and he was working the drive through lane that day. Uh-huh. And then his, his customer bought $40 worth of food. Oh my and God. everyone mm-hmm. here has like technology, right? Like everyone's all hooked technology, right? Like everyone's all hooked up to their Apple Pay and everything yeah, where you can just pay on your phone. Anymore. Only old people use cash. Oh, wait, no, edit that out. <laughs> Wait, say that again and cut off. I said only old people use cash. But we're not. Oof. Oof. It's Oof. a hot take. It's a hot take, G. PG content. Indeed. So do you want me to cut that out? Uh, If you want. You know what? It's up to you. It's fine. Okay. So basically, this this customer had bought $40 worth of food. Like 40 uh-huh. And... They do not, this, his restaurant does not take Apple Pay. He's not, uh-huh. and they do not, this, his restaurant does not take Apple Pay. He's not with the Times. He really isn't with the Times. Keep up. I'm joking. Whatever. I know, I know. His fast food place. I can't really go against him. I am a forever a defender of him. Indeed, indeed. And like, what's it called? Oh my gosh. I'm like, losing my workplace does not take Apple Pay. And this customer was planning to pay with Apple Pay. Mm-hmm. Which was, which means that she was twenty four dollars short because they don't accept it. Oh no! I know, and she paid the other sixteen dollars with gift cards. And 
this sixteen dollars with gift cards and this <laughs> fat, fat fat supreme fat fat supreme was like you know what it's in the goodness of my heart to pay for this woman's meal yes and the woman was like no 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 like that's the nicest thing that anyone has ever done for me like i don't deserve this like i'll just figure out a way and not a way and i'll come back later and the guy and des or fat fat supreme was like nope too late he grabbed his card swiped it and he paid for his meal what an iconic man i, I know him. i know but dana that's not it that is not it the next part is oh sorry now, i i turn to go no, that's not it that's not it so then the woman was like oh yeah i work at a school and i'm the principal and here's my business card if you ever need help like you let me know and that that supreme was like hey i want to be a teacher when i grow older Ooh. and the lady was like oh here's my business card yeah he really got those connections he's getting those connections all because of kind acts so you know what if you do kind acts whether you get something out of it or not you know it's always good to have it and maybe you'll even be lucky and you know get something out of it that benefits you and this guy already has a job because he paid for this one and i saw in my outline and i was like he got a job which can be very hard for some people like they struggle to get a job mm -hmm. and but this guy because of the kindness of his heart he got a job yeah no job interview needed no magic toad needed mm -hmm. just did it he just exactly did no toad. No job interview needed no magic toad needed mm -hmm. just did it he just exactly did no it. toad needed no interview needed no so exactly and his Kind kindness can come back to you at unexpected moments. So you just want to be nice to people, whether you expect something back or not, like just be nice to people. It's going to be full cycle. It's a full cycle of karma. So moving on to our next news story, it narrated by yours truly. We have uh, a recent study that found that people who consider themselves spontaneous were 40% more likely to consider themselves as a happy person and satisfied with their life. So basically the takeaway from this is that people who make spontaneous decisions more often are just happier. They're just happy people. They're happy with how their life is because not everything has to be meticulously planned out all the time. You can just, you know, make a make a spur of the moment decision and it'll make you happy, you know, because it's something that you want to do. And it's just, even though if it's not fit into your schedule, you know, you're just following your emotions and just doing what comes, you know, to your mind. And we, the average- That's really interesting because I agree with that. Like, that's yeah. really interesting because I agree with that. That's yeah. really interesting because I agree with that. You know, I know going out is sometimes very um, controversial, controversial right now. But in the few times that I have gone out, it has been very spontaneous and I've been loving it a lot more. Mm -hmm. So did you know that the average American makes 6,700 every year? That's so many decisions. Like I can't even, I don't even remember the last spontaneous decision I made. But actually, no, I do remember. I, ooh, I went to the beach yesterday. I really did. <laughs> I went to the you know what's kind of funny? Huh? I went to the beach. I went to the you know what's kind of funny? Huh? I went to the beach too, like two weeks ago, but I didn't say anything because I was like, oh, Dana's gonna get mad at me because I went to the beach while well, we we're supposed to be social distancing, which yeah. I was social distancing, but I did go to the beach. Yes, I'm the villain in this story. No, I'm joking. You can go live your best life, Heidi. I won't thank you for that. But so I went to the beach. My mom yesterday, literally yesterday, she was like, hey. Uh, do you want to go to the beach? And I was like, okay. And then we went to the beach and I had such a good time. We went to this super it's good really fun. It was like, it was so good. It was literally, it was so good. It was literally, it was just incredible. I ate a burger because I don't really eat that much fish. So I ate a burger, but it was literally so good. It was one of the best burgers. <gasps> it's in the top yes. of your list. I had a burger. I'm not following the rules of beach life. I know. But you know what? It's fine. It was great. And I loved it. Dana, oh. I don't think that you'd go to the beach. I do not think that you would go to the beach. I don't know why. I just thought that you were the person that would like stay home like all summer because of the corona. No, I don't. Like we went to the beach, but we went to one of the areas where there was less people. 
even though there was still like a good amount of people but there was less compared to like the other area so we just like found an area where there was like less people and they're like okay we'll sit here and then we sat there but you know I had such a good time you know I got to like relax and look at the waves and you know be in the waves and then at the very end we stayed like long enough to watch the beach sunset and watch the beach sunset and it was so nice and I've never seen a beach sunset before so you know what that spontaneous decision made me very happy even though I was super tired by the time we got home but you know it's just a great memory and I had so much fun I really oh my gosh yay I'm so happy for you thank you so it was also pretty sunny I had to put on like five layers of sunblock but you know what you know I was looking greasy I was having a good time in my mind funny story when I went to the beach like two weeks ago I do you you know that you need to reapply sunscreen every 80 minutes right because it wears off yeah yeah, well, I kind of forgot. So me and my friend only. Yeah. Yeah, well, I kind of forgot. So me and my friend only put it on once, and we were in the sun for five hours in the oh morning. The- yeah, really, really. In the moment, it was really, really fun. But when I got home, I looked like a lobster straight from the ocean. Oh my god! Yeah, one time I was like in seventh or eighth grade. I don't remember, but. I, like, I always put on a bunch of sunblock, like, an absolute maniac, but that time, since, like, your, like, Slitterbond is over there, and then the, lo- the lockers are, like, in a different place, I didn't, um, apply the sunscreen as much as I would have wanted to, so I got, so I got, like, super, oh. like, a super bad sunburn on my face, um, so the day after we went back to school, and you know, I already know that my skin is, like, naturally, like, not a, it's like red. It's like not a normal skin color. I don't know. Oh my but gosh, my yes, we've talked about this already, before. If my skin is already naturally red, then can you imagine how sunburned Dana would have looked? It was a hot mess. And I hated it. So you know what? You got to reapply that sunscreen. But yeah, you know, you can still have a good time. But just remember to reapply sunscreen. So is that making spontaneous decisions can make you more happy. Just make sure to take the necessary safety precautions. We don't want any um, coronavirus people. I don't know. I don't know what the word is, but we don't want you to get that. So, you know, history infected. Of- yeah, infected. infected. You want to become infected. You know, history infected. Of- yeah, infected. infected. You want to become infected. So, you know, wear a little face mask, put on hand sanitizer, and, you know, just have a good time. So, you can make spontaneous decisions not only by going to the beach, but you can have. You can do a lot of different things. You can change your coffee order at Starbucks or take a nap whenever you feel like it. You order at Starbucks or take a nap whenever you feel like it or buy an attractive plant and name him Timothy Chalamet and glue on googly eyes and make him a small wig to represent his beautiful mane of hair. You know, the possibilities really are endless. And I don't know if that plant thing was like a secret desire to go and buy a small succulent and name him Timothy Chalamet, and raise him as my child. That's kind of a weird thing. Well, it's fine. You, I love, we love that. We love, we love that. We love it, and we don't talk about it. Yes. I, you know, I thought, I did not know that Timothy Chalamet was French. Timothy Chalamet was French. Timothy until Chalamet. I heard him talk, and I was like, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Chalamet speaks beautiful French, and I regret not taking yeah. French, like French class, I'm really gonna have to hit up Duolingo to try to connect with this man. I love this man. Indeed. I always confuse Timothy Chalamet with Noah Schnapp. No, they're two very different people. One is like 17, the other one is like 20 some. Wait, who's, <laughs> who's the 20 some person? Who was the 21? Chalamet. No, Noah Schnapp is 20. Timothy Chalamet? Yeah, Timothy. Yeah, Tim- Timothy Chalamet's 20 something. Yeah, let me check. Hold on. We're going to have to Bro, do an internet, an internet search right now, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready for this computer ASMR? I don't know if it's picking it he up. He does not age. He does not He's age. 24. Why did I think? Timothy Chalamet's 24. He's 24. He's 24. He's 24. He's 24. He's 25. That's so iconic. He looks, he looks like 15, 16, He's like around d- that time that's crazy i think that's on purpose though like depending on what movie he's playing 
I think they try to make him look younger on purpose. But that really is. He moment. does not look 24. No. He looks. Timothy just- Chalamet. Chalamet is going to age like fine wine. I think he's going to become like like the next Leonardo DiCaprio in terms of like when we're older, we're going to be like, oh, um, Timothy Chalamet looks so good when he was younger. And then people are going to, you know, maybe he's going to make like a stupid, like, I don't know, he was younger. And then people are going to, you know, maybe he's going to make like a stupid, like, I don't know, face decision and get like a really ugly mustache or something. I don't know. But they're going to be like, ew, mom, why would you say that? And I'll be like, just look up pictures of him. And then they will know. They will know. Yeah. Continuous thing. You know, Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio. You know, I think I confused Noah Snap and Timothy Chalamet because they're like the two most talked about men or boys that I know of. <laughs> so I always just merge the two. I don't know. I don't really... Noah Schnapp has like a YouTube channel, right? I don't know. All I know is that he was on Stranger Things. And all I know is that he was on Stranger Things and he has a YouTube channel now. And sometimes he's on TikTok. But that's all I know about that. <laughs> I heard about him from Rose B. Sorry, Rosby, I'm exposing you. <laughs> That's so funny. I don't know. I don't really... Hmm, I don't know. I think I think both of them are overhyped. I think that's safe to say. But you know what? Ooh, Dana, Dana, you're, you're going to get so much hate. I know I'm going to get so much hate. But you know what? This is my hot take on this topic. I think that both of them are overhyped. And I don't think... Like, I think they're... Like, in terms of physicality, we can appreciate it. But I think we're the ones that need to tone it. Sometimes, you know, sometimes the fans can get a little crazy. They can get a little cuckoo. They can get a little out of hand, you know? So we just need to call them oh and make sure not to. I remember. Mm-hmm. I know what you're talking about because I've seen David Dobrik tweet, like, I love you guys so much, but please stop coming to my house. And I was like, you guys so much, but please stop coming to my house. And I was like, whoa, people come to, to celebrities' <laughs> houses to, like, just chill or what? Yeah, that's very, that's very scary. I would not like that. I would beat them with the broom. Just kidding. Okay, moving on. <laughs> um, moving on, we have Dana Science Talks, which is me. I am The story for today is the first woman to walk in space just traveled to the ocean's deepest depth. And if that's not the most iconic thing in the world, I don't know what is. But literally the amount of power that the woman has, incredible. She could just hand in her resume, which base broke the world record for deepest ocean death, and just turn it in, and she would get the job. No magic toad needed, okay? She would, the amount of power, we love it and we appreciate it. But the point I'm trying to make here is that, you know, women in STEM fields are just not, I don't think they're talked STEM fields are just not, I don't think they're talked about enough. Like they're really underappreciated. There's so many significant discoveries and inventions that could not be possible today if it not have been, had been for um, these, you know, female, whether it be physicists or chemists or uh, whether it be physicists or chemists or uh, scientists, whatever it may be. So like Marie Curie and Elena Choa and Ada Lovelace, they all did such pivotal things for science. And we really don't talk about it in the same way that we do, um, you know, as, you know, men in STEM fields. And I think that I think that's something that we need to start talking about and normalizing so that we recognize these pivotal, pivotal roles. And here we have a modern day iconic female women female woman that doesn't make sense female woman <laughs> woman in a stem field her name is dr kathy sullivan and she was the first women's group of u.s astronauts that included women so then she became as time went on she became more interested in like oceanography and you know the different types of animals that live in the ocean just i don't know the ocean so then she completed an hour and a half 35,800 in steepest point at the age of 68, which is power move. Another uh, power move besides magic. This 68 year old has been has been doing so much more than I have ever done in my life. Honestly, like I hate the water. We need to keep up. We need to catch up to her. And she just did that. Well, at the time of up, we need to catch up to her. And she just did that. Well. At the time of this recording, it would be last Sunday on June 7, 2020. And um, she was on a mission with one of her um, friends 
and they took picture of life in a submersible, which is like a type of under marine. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a submarine basically, and um, they're just taking pictures of life around so that they could go study it later. And you know what? The amount of iconicness and power and incredible. This is not grammatically correct, but the amount of incredible in this woman, incredible in this woman is crazy. Okay. It's crazy. You know, the ocean is so deep. Has anyone ever actually reached the bottom of the ocean floor? No, right? No, we've only discovered, I think, don't quote me on I'm this. uneducated. Sure I'm very don't. uneducated. We've only, we've only discovered 2%, 2% of the ocean. Wait, what? 2%? Yeah, we've only discovered, I'm pretty sure it's two percent. Let me see. How much of the ocean is explored? ASMR. ASMR. Five percent. Only five percent. Ninety-five percent of the ocean remains unexplored. We don't know what's down there. And you know, there's many like health health factors that you need to consider when you're going so deep into the ocean yeah, because the air changes a lot, you need to be able to maintain all of that. Mm-hmm. And this 68-year-old woman went deep down into the ocean. She like really how, is, she, like, is she okay? Yeah, she's fine. I think she went in like that. So what we're saying is the future is a female. Times are changing and women are going to take over the world and do more than they ever have done in history. Honestly. And speaking of that, you know what is a perfect transition into our next segment? Because we are saying how women are in a position of establishing their world dominance or um, just being great in general, is this new album by R&B duo Chloe and Halle, which took off. They She really... Okay, edit this part out. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, okay, edit this part out. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay. Um, okay. Chloe and Halle... They took my wig, they grabbed it, and then they snatched it, and they threw it to Mars. And now my metaphorical wig is stuck there. I don't know how my metaphorical wig is stuck there. I don't know how I'm going to get it down. I'm probably going to have to go to the store and buy a new one, because that album was incredible. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about Chloe and Halle. I've never heard of them, so please educate Chloe me. Chloe and Halle are, okay, well, first of all, I did people ever. I have known them. I just figured this out right now because I remember, I remember there's being this show on Disney Channel and it was called, uh, it was called Radio Disney's Next Big Thing. Do you remember that? Because I remember. Oh my gosh, yes. Do you remember that? Nostalgia. Okay. Yes. Yes, so I do. Was, yeah, so I lived on Disney Channel. Disney's next big thing. And then it would have, we would have like all, they would have like all these different contestants. And then you could vote for your favorite one. And Chloe and Hallie went on it for the last like season, for the last like season, I guess, of a Radio Disney's next big thing, which was in 2012. I was seven years old and I still remember them. That's how iconic they are. And when they were, uh, competing in that they were like 13 and I, 11 I think respectively so the amount of iconic display but are um, they singers yes so I remember I that I love them I don't even remember any of the other contestants but I still remember Chloe and Hallie and I still remember watching them on tv and thinking yes I was a stan I was a stan of Chloe and Hallie from a young I age stan. I was a stan of Chloe and Hallie from a young age. I what Stan meant. I was a Stan before the word Stan was invented. I was a Chloe and Hallie Stan at seven years old. I loved them. I would watch all their covers on YouTube. And I would just, you know, I was having a good time. They would sing and I would dance. And I loved it. That says a lot. That really says a lot. Because when you only remember that specific contestant out of who knows how many contestants... That must mean that this album must be really, really good. And it's I want to go listen to it. I'm really good. So then after they competed on Radio Disney's Next Big Thing and won, they kept on, they kept, sorry, they kept on posting uh, covers on YouTube. So consistent. Beyonce. They were mostly Beyonce covers. And then Beyonce was like, hey, Beyonce herself, Queen Bey herself, 
was like, I like, I like them. I like this duo, this duo. So then she signed them and trained them and they're now basically her protégés. And that's just so iconic. And then they performed at the White House for Michelle Obama and her daughters. The level of iconic, hello, incredible. Wait, really? I have never heard about, really? I have never heard about Beyonce talking about these people. They got the Grammys, they did all these things. It was great. And then last year, I remember thinking, oh, I wonder what happened to Chloe and Hanley. Like, you know, what happened? And that's when I discovered, you know, the whole Beyonce thing and the White House and the Grammy album, which is called The Kids Are All Right, which is a pretty good album. Like, it really has some good songs on there. And right now they're just, you know, my everyday bangers, you know? They're just pretty good songs. So then you can imagine my excitement when they announced that they were going to release their new album, Ungodly Hour. Uh, they were going to release their new album, Ungodly Hour. I was just blown away and I was so excited and I put it on my calendar, I put it on my planner because that day was a day set aside for them and only for them. While you were talking about um, Chloe and Hallie, is that how you pronounce her name, Hallie? Yeah. And these people look like queens. Are they sisters? Are they friends? Or they're sisters. Are they? They're two sisters, and they're just so iconic. Oh my gosh, yes. They look like they have their life together. They, they really get me like a... together, honestly. So mm-hmm. they announced the album for Ungodly Hour, and I was like, this is going to be great. And then, I don't know if this is going to be great. And then, I don't know which happened first, but I'm pretty sure it was in the border. Then, they dropped the single and later on the music video for do it which is one of the songs on the album and i was i was deceased i was ready to go into the grave i was like this is the way i way that i love because it was just it was just amazing it was just so it was life-changing after that music video i will never come back as the same person again i literally just stared at it for like the three minutes of not knowing what to do with myself because I was in the presence of two icons. So then the album- Looking at these pictures, I'm I'm like, I'm, oh my God, I'm speaking crazily. <laughs> Looking at these pictures, they give off like a Zendaya vibe. Honestly, and I love it. They really do. They're just so, they have that panel. So I listened to the album. It came out- I, okay, I don't know. My dates are like not, I don't know. I don't remember when anything happened. It's just like this big blob in my brain. But let me just check the release date. More ASMR for our loyal fans. Chloe and Howie, ungodly hour. Fans. Chloe and Howie, ungodly hour. Yeah, it was released two days ago. And I, I, this is, I'm, I think it's safe to say that this is the best album of 2020. We need new music that is good, that we can bop to. The last album they had, they released, um, The Kids Are All Right. It had a couple of songs that I was like, eh, I don't know. This album, there are zero skips. There are no skips. None. Zilch. Nada. All the songs are incredible. They are complete songs are incredible. They are complete bangers, and I love them so much. They released a new music video, too, for one of the songs on the album, Forgive Me. And I'm proud to say that I am still a stan. I will forever be a stan. And I'm so proud that they are finally getting the attention that they deserve. And I'm so proud that they are finally getting the attention that they deserve. So, if you have nothing to do during the quarantine at this moment listen to this album I mean, then i want to listen to this album by chloe and holly the production the vocals the lyrics everything the hearts all of it it's beautiful and it's great and i am witnessing one of the greatest moments in history and that is oh all my gosh I- they made it out to teen vogue that's pretty that's good they really did that. They really did. They made that. it onto Teen Vogue, and their pictures look snatched. They are snatched. They are snatched both on the inside and on the outside. I don't know what I meant by that, but it's a thing, and that's what they are doing. So I'm going to let Heidi take over now. Sorry for my very long rant, but go stream 
on Gumtree. No, it's okay. It's okay. On Spotify. And also my throat is really dry. So go ahead. Throat is really dry. So go ahead. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. With the quarantine happening, a lot of birthday parties are canceled or postponed and they're not being held as traditional as they would have been. So people have found a way to make their birthdays wonderful by doing drive-in birthdays. And that- yeah, I, sometimes like, sometimes it'll be like the middle of the day and I'll just hear like, beep, 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 honk, 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 honk. <laughs> and um, I love the sound effect. We really are, we really are masterminds. So yes, we um, have the mind of a mastermind. Uh, yes, I'm so creative like that. Here, like this honking outside, and I was like, "What is this? What is this ruckus? What is going on?" So then I peek outside of my window, and you know, it's a little like drive-by birthday party, and they're honking and they're having such a good time. And I think that's so cute. And then I go back inside the house, and I continue to I don't know eat Cheetos or whatever I do. I don't know eat Cheetos or whatever it is I was doing. You know, it's such a wholesome thing. We really are, we're finding ways to be creative, even though we have to be apart, if that makes sense. Exactly, exactly. Oh my gosh, I hate the word exactly a lot. I need to find a new word. Okay. Um, so with birthday drive, I've been using the posters that I've kept in my closet since maybe third or fourth grade because they're colorful. And you know, the, hmm, what happened? Oh, sorry. Never mind. Keep going. Okay, yeah. So, you know, when you're younger, you use more of the colorful posters with the vibrant backgrounds, and then, like, the older you get, you change yeah. into, you change into yeah. the white background and just use colors on the poster? We become blander as we age, like, rotten crackers. Ah. crackers rot? I don't know. But we just become... Yeah, so we just use... Become, we become more boring as we age, uh-huh. is what we're trying to say here. Yes. So I've been holding on to what we're trying to say here. Yes. So I've been holding on to these vibrant neon green and yellow posters yes. for Lord knows who, how long. And they've been collecting dust and stuff. <laughs> and then I was invited to this birthday drive-in for our friend Praline. Happy late birthday again, Praline. Praline. He's probably not going like, to I... stop listening to the episode. Be like, He's going to zone out. These yeah. people are, I'm not associated with them in any way, shape, or form. Exactly, exactly. Oh my gosh, I just said that again. Anyway, so I was like, you know what? I can use these vibrant, highlighted, colored posters for this drive-in parade so I can stick it out the window in our car. For this drive-in parade so I can stick it out the window and our car will catch eyes. Yeah, Billie Eilish would be so proud of you right now. She would be like, yes, embrace the neon. She'd be very proud of me. And you know what? The poster... The color of the poster was the exact same shade as the, her green hair strand. Like, she dyed so the inside of her hair, right? Like, her like, roots are, like, green. and then it Yes, green. yes. It's so iconic. So, you know, our car popped off. My vibrant poster mm-hmm. sign was hanging out the car window, and it just caught people's eyes, and that's the goal. Yes, that so is the goal. So, that's what I've been hearing. Make, like, mm-hmm. Billy, you make sense. I was going to say, absorb neon into your life, but no, we are not... UV rays or sponges. We, I don't know, incorporate. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm incorporate neon into your life, not absorb my vocabulary. Be vibrant. Well, yes, be vibrant. I thought you said be vibrant. Either one is good. Oh, no, 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 no. Dana, heck no. You guys <laughs> do not want to be vibrating. <laughs> Sits in the massage chair, be like, Ugh. yes, that is my, that is the goal here. Yes, and speaking of birthdays and stuff, <laughs> I... speaking of vibrating, sorry, keep going, ah! keep going. Ah! Dana, <laughs> Dana, who do you think I am? Dana, okay, so speaking of birthdays, I've been trying to find ways to make more unique gifts because I'm kind of like lazy to go out, not gonna lie, mm-hmm. and I want to stay safe, so I'm staying inside. Yeah. And I want to make like this painting. Ooh. Yes, happy birthday, Juliana. It's gonna. You're 15 now, and yes, that's so iconic. I don't know who Juliana is, but we stand her. We stand Juliana. Exactly. So I'm gonna make her painting. So let, let's hope this doesn't go south, and our painting is something that will turn out to be decent. Yeah. You're just gonna turn in like this weird like blob thing you're that will turn out to be decent. Yeah. You're just gonna turn in like this weird like blob thing. You're gonna be like, "Happy birthday!" <laughs> and she's gonna be like, "What's that?" Like. Like, what's that splotch in the middle? 
Yeah, I don't know. You can definitely try out painting in the quarantine, you know, painting, relaxing, go for it. I find painting very stressful, so I'm not going to go for it. But you're a perfectionist. It's up to you. Yes, perfectionist things. Are Are you a perfectionist? Was it no? Yes, I... Hmm. I think I'm a perfectionist when it comes to certain things, perfectionist when it comes to certain things, but like when I'm doing art in any way, it just comes out so ugly that I just get frustrated and I just give up and I just end up with what you would describe as going south as this big, quote, uh, big splotchy thing. I don't think so. I don't think so, Dana. But okay. I don't like it. Not my thing. But you know what? If you like, you know, getting artsy and, you know. Well, whatever floats your boat. Yeah, whatever floats your boat. Your little boat. Yes. And I think this brings us to our motivational quote because we're going to be closing soon. Mm-hmm. And today's motivational quote, or this week's motivational quote, you can say, is by Napoleon Hill. I hope that's I pronounced. Not, that's not the dictator, name. right? That's not the dictator. Like, that's not the French dictator. Is it? I don't know. I don't do history. I don't do... Girl, let me... You're getting more ASMR. Hold on. And Napoleon... ASMR. Hold on. And Napoleon... No. The... Okay. Napoleon Hill is an author. The other Napoleon is Napoleon... I'm butchering a lot. I'm butchering the same a lot. It's Napoleon Bonaparte. There's about history. Because I don't... He wasn't a dictator. I thought he was a dictator. I don't even know. I don't know anything yeah. about history. But let's be thankful as a dictator. Or I guess, I don't know, dictator in theory. Because I was like, if you're talking about kindness, like he's talking. But no, it's not. It's an author and we're talking about kindness, like he's talking. But no, it's not. It's an author and we stand. Exactly, exactly. Ah, okay. I just said that word again. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, the quote is yeah, I'm going to keep a tally, in a world toward tally mark. Exactly, yeah, count guys. Mark on how many times Hallie says exactly. Hallie. And ah! today's, motivation, today's motivational quote is In a world where you can be anything, be kind. Yeah. Be kind, guys. That's so cute. Kindness, we need more of that. We need more of her. Kindness wins. Kindness always wins. And that has been seen and is evident because. Fat, fat, supreme got it because fat, fat, supreme got a job. He got a job just by being kind. Yes, that is a lesson from today. Be kind mm-hmm. and you know just do things to help others, even if it doesn't always help you. You can just make people stay better, and that's the takeaway here. So, Wait, Dana, if Napoleon Hill was an author, if the if Napoleon Hill is an author, then what's the name of the ice cream where it's chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry? Isn't that also Napoleon? I think no, that's Napolitan, <laughs> right? Le- more let me see, let me see. Hold on, hold on. No, yeah, that's Neapolitan ice cream, chocolate, and the strawberry. As you can see, we don't know anything about anything. That is there. We go. That's a second takeaway here. We, but we are simultaneously have the minds of a mastermind. So you know what? Maybe our brains are in the right place that we don't need to know about this. I don't know. Who knows? day that is all for today folks as the looney tunes cartoons would say you know with the cursive where it's like that's all folks so yeah uh thank you for joining us today make sure to visit our website and instagram uh our instagram you can visit our instagram for updates on when our new episodes are posted you can visit our instagram for updates on when our new episodes are posted as well as like additional method mess oh my god messages and you can go ahead and visit our website if you want to read more about the new stories that we share today or you know in previous podcasts and yeah thank you for listening and have a great day